بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله This is Behold and God speaking from Athens, Greece I am very happy that I finished my video series which refutes all or at least most of the Bible verses alphabetically which uh, Christian apologists and Trinitarians and missionaries love to use of course out of context misinterpretation etc this video is to bring you more verses which prove that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, can never be God. Before I begin this video, I would like to make a few comments. Number one, it surprises me how some of you people out there, and I've been reading your comments, no matter what I tell you, no matter what proof I show you, you still come out and say, Jesus is God. That's it. I believe it. You can never change my mind. I'm showing you the proof from your own book. There must be something wrong with you. And may I remind you, if you've ever heard of this famous philosopher, one of the greatest philosophers of the 20th century, he's probably dead by now, his name, if I remember correctly, is Karl Raymond Popper. Now this person said in December 1949, you do not need to search for many ways to prove your theory. On the contrary, instead of wasting time, you should see if there is at least one argument, one argument which disproves your theory. That's what you should be searching for. And he's absolutely correct. I agree with him. Of course, Islam is not searching for philosophy and stuff like that. But I'd love to, I'd love to throw that into the mix because it is not an innovation, because it proves our case that once you find at least one valid argument which disproves the alleged divinity of Jesus, peace be upon him, then your argument fails. And I've brought tens of arguments, not just one. Now, let's bring in more scripture, scriptural, whatever, evidence from your own Bible, you Christians, which disproves any type of divinity to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Luke chapter 18, verse 18 and 19, the famous verse, the famous uh, happening when they went and told him, good teacher, what must I do to enter heaven? And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, turned around and said, why do you call me good? No one is good, including himself, except God alone. So he's denying, he doesn't even want to be called good. And he tells you the only good one is the creator of the heavens and the earth. The same is repeated in Mark chapter 10, verse 18. John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus said to them, My food is to obey, I mean, food he meaning uh, metaphorically, is to obey the will, as a good Muslim, he's saying to obey the will of the one who sent me and finish the work he gave me to do. He what? He gave me to do. John 12, 44, Jesus said in a loud voice, Whoever believes in me, believes not only in me, but also in him who sent me. Who sent him? His creator of the heavens and the earth. And the, uh, the heavens and the earth. John 5, 24. I am telling you the truth. Those who hear my words and believe in him who sent me have eternal life. That's what eternal life means. If you have any doubts, go back to John 17, 3. The Tawheed, the pure monotheism, uttered by the lips of Jesus Christ himself, saying that the only true God is the Heavenly Father. That's it. Case closed. That's the only verse I have to bring you, but, you know, just in case some of you might actually start thinking and stop being so stubborn with your dogmatic, nonsensical, and uh, ridiculous statements, which cannot be backed up in any way shape or form deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 39 the lord your god is in heaven and on earth he is your lord excuse me the lord is your god in heaven and on earth i'm, I'm correcting myself and there is no other but him john 6 38 for I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, as a good Muslim, that's what he's saying, this is what Islam means, but the will of him who sent me. 
if Jesus was God, then he would say, I would do my will because, you know, that's, that's my will. That's it. But he doesn't say that. John 12, 49. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Question. If Jesus was God, a part of any trinity, then why did he say this? Simply because he is not God. He's obeying someone else. He doesn't have his own authority. He doesn't have his own will. He does the will of him who sent him. If he were God, he would say, my will. He would say stuff like, you know, I command you to do this and that according to my will. But he never does that. Okay. Matthew 5.20 For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the scribes, the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. The classic verse beginning from Matthew 5.17, where he confirms the Old Testament. And what does the Old Testament say? Ooh, lots of things. We'll get to that too. Okay. John 13.16. He that is sent, Jesus, is not greater than he, God, who sent him. So they can't be equal. Automatically, this disproves any type of divinity. John 14, 24. He who does not love me will not obey my teachings. Those words you hear are not mine. They, are, they belong to the Father who sent me. To who? To the Father who sent me. Matthew 7, 22 to 23. On the day of judgment, many shall say, Lord, Lord. Didn't we cast out demons and perform miracles in your name? And Jesus will answer them, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who practice lawlessness. Why now? Why does he say that? Because he know this is a prophecy against Christianity, by the way, against Christians. Because which religion in the world says, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus? Answer, Christianity. Jews don't say in the name of Jesus. Muslims don't say in the name of Jesus. Atheists don't say in the name of Jesus. Hindus don't say in the name of Jesus. Buddhists don't say in the name of Jesus. Christians say in the name of Jesus. So without even mentioning the word Christianity, and he ever does that, by the way, he's condemning Christians. Bye-bye. 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 Finito. <laughs> Great. Matthew 4, verses 1 to 11. In, in short, Satan tempts Jesus while God cannot be tempted, look at that, and lifts him up and carries him from one place to the other. Now, question. Since the devil existed from the very beginning and he knew who God was, didn't he, isn't he supposedly supposed to recognize that Jesus is God? How could he, how could Satan touch God and lift him if Jesus is God? Answer is very simple. Jesus is not God. The devil knows this. And why does he tell him, worship me? Would the devil ever tell God to worship him? Are you, are you kidding me? Come on. Come on. Get out of here. Be serious. Luke 22, verses 43 and 44. An angel from heaven descended, appeared unto him, and strengthened him. And what? And strengthened him. In great anguish, he prayed even more fervently. His sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Does God pray? Does God ask for help? Does God beg for mercy? From who? From himself? He's supposedly himself God, according to you Christians. And why does an angel, an angel, come to strengthen him? Are you serious? To come to comfort, comfort him. To comfort him. Sorry. What are you talking about? Are you guys serious? Unless, of course, Jesus is not God. He's simply a prophet of God. He's the Messiah. Yes, of course, we agree that. We Muslims, we agree with that. Mark 12, 28, 29. Very famous verses. A teacher of the law was there and heard the discussion. He saw that Jesus had given the, the Sadducees, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm sorry if I'm killing the word, a good answer. So he came to him and with a question. Which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus replied, verse 39, The most important commandment is this, 
shama. I'm saying it also in Hebrew. Listen, hear, like we say in Arabic, sami'a. Sami Allah, as we say, Sami Allah, Huli Min Hamida. Sami'a. Sami'a Israel. Shama Israel. Hear, O Israel. Adonai, our Lord. Eloheinu, the Lord our God. Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Echad. The Lord our God. The Lord is one and only. One and only. Now here's a very important question. If Jesus was part of any trinity, wasn't that the most critical time in his career here on earth to say, oh, okay, listen, uh, you Israelites, the God is supposedly, if he's part of the Trinity, the Father, me, and the Holy Ghost, and we three are one. Did he say that? No, he never said that. What did he say? He repeated word for word what Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, said according to the Old Testament in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Word for word. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, notice the word our, our, meaning his God at the same time. The Lord is one and only. Echad in Hebrew and Arabic, sister languages, means one and only. Pure one, pure monotheism. Even Paul, Paul, the corrupter of the scriptures, the, the innovator, the liar, etc., even though he's a liar, etc., and a pagan, and whatever he was, even though his, many of his teachings go against Jesus, at some point in his writings, he says things which disprove any type of divinity of Jesus. Forget about Colossians 116 and all that, that BS. It could be even fabricated. The guy could even be innocent, for all as I, can, for all as I know. How do we know that all these writings of Paul are 100% his? Some people were caught fabricating books and trying to ascribe them to Paul. They were caught. This is historical. So he could even be innocent, to, so to, to be fair to Paul, you know. He could be the devil, he could be, he could be a monotheist, who knows, who knows. Some of his writings are weird, we know that, but okay, look what he says. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 28. But when all things have been placed under Christ's rule, wait for it, wait, it's coming. Don't get, uh, don't get excited yet. Now, ah, look what he said. <laughs> Then he himself, the Son, will place himself under God. God will be above him. Who placed all things under him. And God will rule completely over all. No exception. No exception. Clear. 100% clear. If you have any doubt, go to John 17, 3. Case closed. So, I apologize, but this video really did take long. It's about 13 and a half minutes now. But I had to make out all these points in one good video. Thank you for your patience. I truly hope that you hot-headed, stubborn Christians, Trinitarian Christians, will actually come to your senses and start realizing that you are following falsehood innovation, church lies, um, what else? Dogma, which has no, which, ha which is purely dogma, it's nothing, it's nothing uh, true or historical. Paganism, that's all you're following. You follow nothing but conjecture and you do nothing but lie. Either on purpose or without knowing. In either case, your faith and your book which you base your faith upon, has many, 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 many arguments against what you actually believe. And even one argument is enough to disprove your case. And there are tens, maybe even hundreds of arguments which disprove your case. So stop following falsehood, come to your senses, leave falsianity, that's what I call it, falsianity, falsianity, fakianity, you call it whatever you want to call it. The original name is Mithraism, but okay, that's another uh, that's another topic. I'll make another video on that, inshallah, God willing. Uh, think about liking, sharing, subscribing, or disliking the video. I don't care. Well, the video has so many dislikes, so 
doesn't prove anything. You can gather all your friends and dislike my videos. So, who cares? Thank you for the attention anyway. <laughs> anyway, it's been a quarter of an hour. Uh, thank you for your time and patience. And to my Muslim brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I'll see you in the next video.